All right, so this system's pretty simple here. So we have a moving average. Actually, we have three moving averages here. Um, first thing is we want to make sure that these moving averages are uh, stacked. I'm assuming that this is probably a piece here that's missing, but most likely you probably want to make sure that the 200 EMA is below the faster moving averages, but it doesn't specifically say that, so I'm not going to add it. So we'll just make sure that prices is above, right? The slower, slowest moving average, and then make sure that the two faster moving averages are stacked accordingly, you know, for a long trade. And then we're going to look at the double stochastics and stochastics, uh, right? And make sure that they are in their appropriate locations here. Uh, so for example, we can see from this screenshot here um, that, let's see, the double stochastics is actually the, the faster moving one here. Yeah, the double stochastics is the faster moving one here. So we need the, all right, the double stochastics to dip down into the oversold while the stochastics right which is a little slower um, is still in the overbought territory so in other words yeah still kind of um, in a long trend territory there right and then so once our moving averages are you know all in their appropriate locations and the stochastics are in their appropriate locations then we're simply looking for a reversal bar, right, in the trend direction. So, all right, so with that, uh, actually, hold on. Um, we're going to pause for a moment here while I get my chart ready for this next question. All right, so I have the 200 EMA, uh, the dark red, 34 EMA, the brighter red, and then the white line, so I made the EMA8 white because it's almost always printing on top of the bars. So, yeah, it's a little hard to read the red on top of these Ranko bars there. And then we also have the double stochastic and the stochastic here all on the same sub, sub panel there. All right. And also, I have the um, threshold lines set up accordingly as well. Yeah, so with that, all right, I, I have my chart set up. So let's, let's see, let's just, um, yeah, uh, we can just start working from the top and just work our way down through this set of uh, system rules here. Okay, so let's make sure that price is above the EMA 200 or below it. So let's unpin that. All right, so we're comparing the EMA 200 to right the close of the Ranko bar and make sure it's above or below. Well, actually, let's let's do this. Um, let's be a little more thorough. We'll compare the EMA to either the high or the low of the Ranko bars, right? So if if the bars are below, uh, or I should say for for a short signal, we're gonna make sure that the high of the Ranko bar is underneath uh, the EMA. And then uh, for a long signal, we're gonna make sure that the low, let's see, we got, there we go. We'll make sure that the low of the Ranko bar is above the EMA, right? And so if a bar is touching the EMA, then no trend, so no, no signal. Right? So to do that, we're going to need a comparison solver, right? So we're going to be comparing the, the bar high and low prices to the EMA 200. And so let's see here. Let's... For a long, yeah, for a long signal, we're comparing the low of the bar. For a short signal, we're comparing the high of the bar to the EMA 200. There. All right, so input A, 
that's going to be the high and low prices. So let's switch the type over to price. And for a long, we want to make sure that the low price is above. And for a short signal, we want to make sure that the high price is below. And then for input B, well, that is our EMA 200. There's our EMA and 200. Put that in there. And there we have it. All right, yep. So as mentioned, if a bar actually touches the EMA, right, then we don't have a trend. But as long as the high is below it, then we could have a short trend. And as long as the low price is above it, we could have a long trend. All right, so that's our first one there. Second rule is let's make sure that the faster EMAs are stacked accordingly. So again, that's another comparison, right? We're comparing the EMA 8 to the EMA 34. So let's grab another comparison solver. Connect that in. All right. EMA 34. All right, and we'll just plug those in real quick here. All right, there's the EMA. Set it to an eight period. Input B, we're gonna set that to the EMA. There you go. And make that a 34 period. All right, pretty straightforward. So as long as right the white line is above the red line then we could be in a uh, a long trend and vice versa right so if the white line EMA 8 is below the EMA 34 we could be in a short trend okay so we have these two rules here so we can now start connecting those into an AND node and we can get some better trend filtering going on All right there we go so there right so the rankos are below the ema 200 but the faster emas are you know stacked in the wrong direction okay so we have that now let's make sure that our double stochastics is below 20. um all right, so the uh, cyan line, or the light blue, right? We want that to be below 20. So the 20 and the 80 level, those are threshold levels, right? We want the double stochastics below the 20 threshold level. Right. So for that, we're going to use a threshold solver. Yeah. So let's see. Let's name this. All right. Double stochastic. Um, and we're looking for a 20, 80 um, numbers here. So let's plug in the. Um, yeah, let me just remind myself. Yeah, it's a five period double stochastics. All right, so within the solver here, right, our input is going to be the double stochastics. And there we go, there's our double stochastics. And we're making that a pretty fast one here, so five period, call that good. Now, we need to go into the threshold settings and adjust our numbers here um for the 2080 so for a long signal here right we want the double stochastics um less than 20 right so this is greater than so we need to switch this and probably we'll make it less than or equal 
to 20. And then a short trade, we need the double stochastics to be greater than or equal to 80. All right, so hit apply, and there we go. So we can see, right, whenever the double stochastics goes below, right, the light blue line, we're getting a long output. And if the double stochastics goes above 80, right, uh, we're getting a short. So there's that part. And let's see, next, we just need the regular stochastics here. Um, all right, so we need the regular stochastics above 75. All right, so let's just add another threshold solver. Connect that in. All right, so now we're looking for, let's see, 75 and 25 levels there. All right, so let's plug in the stochastics indicator. There's our stochastics. All right, so this is a slower stochastic. So we've got, we have 14, 21, and one. Um, we're not real. We're not using the smoothing, but you know it's always good to be good to be thorough. So I was given a, a smoothing value there, but so we'll just plug it in anyways. So all right, and so we are all right. So we're using the percent D that's already selected for us. So we're good to go there. Now we just need to go into the threshold settings and, um, and put in our values. All right, so this time for a long signal, we do want the stochastics to be greater than 75. Oh, not 0.75, but 75 there. So, all right, but this, let's adjust this here so that because usually when people put a value in it's okay to equal it so we'll adjust this to be equal to and for the short we'll say less than or equal to as well and then put in 25. all right and there you go so the purple line is our slowed down stochastics right so here we are in the overbought territory with a long output. And here we go. So here's a uh, oversold for a short. And so now we just need to combine everything together like so. All right, so we do have some um, what signal filtering going on right now. And it looks like, man, we missed that signal by one bar. Um, so I'm trying to see if we actually have any signals here. Yeah, one bar, one bar, one bar. We might have to make an adjustment here, but the trade signal actually only occurs on a reversal bar, right? So there you go. So that bar is, yeah. So we need a reversal bar um, to actually trigger the signal, right? That's what we're looking for. And so that would be, actually, let's do this up here. So the to identify reversal Ranko bars, we can just use the inflection solver here. Let's connect that in. And we just look at the closing price of the bar, right? So the input here, is going to be price 
and the closing price, right? There you go. So, so we can see on rank of bars, right, it, it, it identifies all of the reversal bars. Right? So that's the actual trade uh, trigger there. Well, I'll connect that in. And we'll see if we do actually get any signals. Probably not. Yeah. Uh, so you now it could be that these Renko bars are moving too fast. Here, let's take a look. Let's pull up the screenshot here. And we're using a Ninza 10.5. Yeah, so it looks like these bars are moving. Uh, they're stepping in five tick increments, I'm thinking. Uh, which, on my chart, I only have these bars stepping in two tick increments. Yeah, we're not getting any signals here, but let's see, I'll just up that to five just for good measure and voila all right we are getting signals now look at that right off the bat got a signal there so there you go so just adjusting the rank of bars did make a difference so all right there we go there's a short signal. And all right, long and a short and a long. There you go. Okay, so now we're getting signals there. Just needed an adjustment uh, to the rank of bars. All right, so let's open this up. All right, so there we have it. Um, so the inflection solver right, is what looks for the Ranko reversal bars. And then the next two solvers here, right, those are the moving average trend filters. And then we also have the stochastics indicators, uh, which are, which is a part of the slingshot um, term um, for this, yeah, for this trade setup, All right? That's our slingshot. Uh, conditions there um, yeah so that's it all right so with that let me see if there's any follow-ups on this um, Jerome says that's what he was looking for all right good enough 